knitters, Barbara Benson here, and I am at the knitting table in a, at, in, I don't know which preposition I'm supposed to use, at a good yarn, and I have so much fun stuff to talk to y'all about. Um, we are currently open to the public uh, Monday through Saturdays uh, from 11 to 3, but we have decided that on Wednesdays from noon to one while I'm doing the Facebooky thing, we are closed because it was just trying to get this taken care of while people were in here was a little bit on a challenge. So we take a wee bit of a little lunch. It's not a lunch break. It might be your lunch break. I don't get a break, <laughs> but that is what we're doing. Let me scooch you over. Let me make sure the volume, maybe the volume's low. Oh, there we go. I don't know if you guys could have heard me. The volume was all the way down. Did you, were you able to hear me? Uh, welcome everybody. Thanks for, I'm getting the little thing popping up saying that you are here. Um, because right now we are not open to the public and Susan is going to be in her office. I am going to take my mask out. Yeah. There we go. As I said, uh, just in case the volume wasn't up and y'all couldn't hear me, we are open Monday through Saturday. 11 to 3 except for on Wednesdays when we do this Facebook live and we're closed from noon to 1 so that I can have this time with y'all otherwise I'd love to have you come in and see us we are practicing social distancing we ask that you wear a mask if you do not have a mask we have some that you can use and we also have um, the hand sanitizer stuff that you put on your hands um, hot cup of tea pen and notebook you are ready laura and hi jennifer in cincinnati you have any i hope it is not too cold up there it's it's a little cool for florida <laughs> right now um so i have a lot of gorgeous gorgeous yarn hi elizabeth I, yeah, I don't know if Kat's there. Hopefully she's in there. We have some awesome stuff from her today. Um, so real quick, let's talk about the virtual goings on. Hey, Kat's here. Virtual goings on that will be going on. We have the coffee with Erica Knight on November 7th, that's a Saturday from 10 to 11. She is an amazing designer and she's going to talk about the work, her current collection for Rowan. And we have Rowan to thank that she's gonna be doing with, with us. Um, you can sign up for this event and you'll get to hear some amazing things from this long standing, amazing designer. Did I say amazing enough times? Um, the coffee with Erica Knight is $10, but you get a 10% discount to use with any of your Rowan purchases and that discount, you can use it through the month. Um, and also anyone who attends, there will be a door prize drawing for the Erica Knight event. So it is going to be an amazing, again, I need a new adjective a fabulous <laughs> uh, event and gonna be a lot of fun. And it's really cool. Um, obviously, the the way that we've had to lock down and quarantine and the lack of travel has had all kinds of effects, but being able to do all this Zoom and having appearances from people that we normally wouldn't get to see because they're in, you know, like England or something, I think that it's really cool and I hope that even after everything opens up, we can still continue to do these kinds of things because it just it just makes things more fun, I think. Oh, good morning to, oh, Athami. Hi, Athami. Anne, um, Marianne, hi, Marianne. Debbie, hello. Maria, hello. So many exciting people are here. Thank you so much for joining us. So that's the Erica Knight thing. Um, also, we would like to announce that this coming Tuesday, we will be closed for fairly obvious reasons. <laughs> we will be closed on Tuesday, but then on Wednesday, I will be here and I have a special surprise guest. 
and it's gonna be interesting to see how that works out. I haven't had a guest on this yet, but we are gonna have a lot of fun with that and do some super, you know, talk about some fun stuff. But it's a surprise. Hello, Harriet and Maria. Uh, if I miss you, this thing goes by pretty darn fast. Um, so make sure to tune in next Wednesday for a surprise guest and, you know, more of me because I'm here talking all the time. Um, and I also want to remind you that November 2nd, you still have time to sign up for the Building Blocks class. I failed to grab the thing, but I've showed it off a couple times. That is an Afghan project. It's a wonderful booklet and you learn a new skill with every block that is going to be on Mondays from five to six via Zoom. And each Monday you'll be working on a different block with Carol. So you can jump in still to that on Mondays. So the other thing, November is very special. It is our anniversary celebration month. We were just going to do like a weekend, but since we're doing it like this, Susan decided that we're going to celebrate for the entire month. So make sure you are signed up for the A Good Yarn newsletter so you can get all of the news. There's probably gonna be door prizes throughout the month and maybe special events and things. And we're just going to have a lot of, is it 10 years, Susan? 11. 11, thank you, Murray. 11 years, it's our 11th anniversary of A Good Yarn being open. And we want to celebrate because it is it's amazing that we've, I, 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 I know I've only been a participant for a little bit of the run, but this store, and Susan didn't tell me to say this, this store is amazing. <laughs> this store, it, it's, it's built a wonderful community and she's got great yarn and great bags and not just knitting, but crochet and weaving and spinning. And I just think that it definitely deserves to be celebrated. And we hope you'll join us all month. Um, 11 years, it's just, that's a long time. So that's everything on this piece of paper. So um, I have so much yarn. So much yarn you would not believe how much yarn I have on this table but the first thing I want to show you I walked in and saw this piece behind me and was just flabbergasted at how absolutely beautiful it is let me grab it so this is let me move my chair this is a garment and it is called a ruana um, it's a South American garment. I would need to look up more about precisely uh, where it came from. But a Ruana is, the way a Ruana works is it is, a, it's a rectangle. It's sort of a cousin to the poncho. And in the back, it is one big rectangle. And then in the front, it has a split. So it's the same width in the front, but there's a split for you. And there's a little gap. It's, if you took and added these two together, I think there is a little bit of a cast off in the back. And so it's sort of like a cardigan that isn't sewn up at the sides. It is easy and beautiful to wear. And this is just, I mean, it is just a stunning, stunning piece. I want y'all to get a good look at it. Beautiful lace. Let me show you the back. Again, look at that. This is by our very own Catherine. She is just a beautiful, I'm so in love with this. I walked in, I was like, oh my gosh, it's so pretty. And this is, it comes in two sizes. And this is the second size. This is the larger size. It's not something that really fits. So you just decide which size you want to make to based on how big and flowy you want it. I'm gonna stick it back here and sit back down. No. <laughs> no, I don't try things on. <laughs> Hello, Jay. Okay. 
There, you can still see it. <sighs> Y'all, don't do this to me. <laughs> Fine, I'll put it on. I'm not a model. Catherine wants it modeled. She should be in here. Okay, here we go. There, see? And it hangs down. I just, I love it. I think it is gorgeous. You can see it ended up being on me about a three quarter. I'm kind of short. No, not kind of. I am short. So if you are taller and your wingspan is bigger than mine, it's going to be a little bit more of an elbow length. But it is absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely love it. You can do that bit. Oh, that looks really cool. Hmm. So interesting. I wonder if I did that side and that side, then we've got more of, you could fuss with it. You could do, actually, you know, we have those, um, those leather cuffs. You could put it through a cuff right here. It's just beautiful. It is so pretty. I love it. I want to make one. Okay. So. <laughs> that was fun. And beautiful. Now, the name of this pattern is the Wilson Ruana. Um, if you don't know, Catherine names all of her patterns after significant figures in Sarasota history. I don't know who Wilson is. I'm sure that she has a wonderful story to tell about it. Um, yeah, I totally need one. Um, I'm assuming not the volleyball Wilson would be my guess because it doesn't really go. Uh, it takes um, approximately 1,450 to 1,600, so the different sizes, 1,600 yards of fingering weight yarn this is in Miss Babs Deep Sea Jellyfish, and it takes one skein of Katahdin. <laughs> we know and we love Miss Babs, and you know she likes to make giant skeins of stuff. Um, oh, she was the first, Wilson was the first woman to register to vote in Sarasota. That is incredibly cool and she owned Sarasota's first newspaper. That is fantastic. Thank you, Catherine, for sharing that. Um, Katahdin is a light fingering, blue face Leicester. Look at this. And it comes in one gigantic skein of yarn. And one skein is enough to make the size two. And oh my gosh, look how beautiful this color is. This is surprise, and this is a Babette. Now what Babette means in Miss Babs land is that it's a color that is repeatable. So you could get it the same color, but that each, they're so variegated that each skein is going to be slightly different. Um, but the colors, the color combination here is something that you could see again. They also have, she also has something called a wild iris and what that means is if you see it and you love it, you need to get it because that skein will never exist again. This is the Katahdin we have right now, but Susan assured me that we are getting in a new shipment very soon of 20 more skeins. So watch for that. I'm gonna show you, look at this one. This is Be It Peace. That, all of these would be absolutely gorgeous in this beautiful Ruana. We have both a dark and a light, silvery gray. The dark is pewter and the light is blue muscle. And again, so we're sticking with neutrals right now, but I can't wait till get the new shipment. We have a dark chocolate and a black bird. Finding truly black yarn we actually had someone in today and I had to explain that real black black yarns you don't see a lot it would be uh, it would be amazing that it, you could wear it with anything and then the last skein we have I love this color this is muslin and it's this very faint peachy peach color 
Pinky Peach, Pinky Peach. Gorgeous. Now, if you do not want to make Wilson in wool, if you like the idea of having it as more of a lightweight garment, which it would be amazing. Can you imagine wearing this to the beach over your swimsuit? You could put a little belt around it. It would be fabulous. We also, you could use three skeins of our trailhead yarn, and this is Fundy, and this is a 55% cotton, 45% linen. It is a lace weight yarn, so it's gonna be more open, but that's definitely what you would be going for with a lighter weight garment. This is, um, huh, let me find the color. This is Lichen Me Some Lichen. <laughs> So this is a beautiful green and gray variegated. So that is pretty. We picked out ones that we have three skeins of. So if y'all want to make Wilson in one of these, this is China Doll. It would be a fantastic neutral. Look at that. Oh, I just am imagining. So lace, this is linen and cotton. It is going to love love the lace in this pattern so much if you're wanting to feel a little crazier this is the pride colorway you could be a rainbow absolutely gorgeous or if you're just feeling pink this is that is a really weird name for this color it's called golden gate <laughs> i don't know why they named it that color because it's definitely hot pink but Maybe they know something I don't know about Golden Gate, but this one's called Golden Gate. <laughs> and then I think this one would be amazing in Wilson. This is um, Bull S uh, asterisk asterisk asterisk. But isn't it pretty? It's got these grays and with little shots of red through it. So any of these would be gorgeous in Wilson. Um, looking at the pattern, you need, um, it's US size 5. There are some notes. Design is knit in two separate front panels, which are joined at the neck and continued down the back as one piece. Um, you can, she says that you can substitute out some of the lace and make a more solid thing for more coverage. We've definitely got written instructions and a chart but here is I'm gonna pull this up here's the schematic so you can see how it works it's a giant rectangle isn't that cool so, you should make a Ruana I think I need one of these it is so beautiful I just when I walked in I was like oh it's so pretty <laughs> okay it would be a great uh, yes, yeah, so we're gonna get another sample in Kitty B Largo. Oh, I love Largo so much. Um, so it's just, it's gonna be a beautiful piece and I look forward to seeing all of the different ones that y'all knit. So that is that note. Um, let's skip to one of my other most favoritist things, which is bags. I have a bag problem. I am not ashamed to admit it. If I'm not buying yarn, I'm buying new bags. And we have two really cool new bags in. So we have, these are called moon bags. How cute is that? It's this round, it's got a pocket. This one's black. Here, you can maybe see it on the gray one back. This is like an army green. It's got a pocket. Um, and see it has a strap now and it also has this so the way the strap works is the strap goes through you can't you know you really can't see it in the back you can see that it is attached here you put the strap through here and you can wear it cross body or you can wear it as a waist pack so there are two different options it's got a really heavy duty zipper and it's made out of a heavy canvas and inside, it's got a couple little loops for your knitting needles. And so you can carry your project around or, you know, you could just use it as a purse. As you can see, it's got the loop here to make it into the crossbody. Well, no, 
No, that's just to hang stuff off of, I guess, because here is the way it straps. I think there's a lot of fun that can be had with this. I don't know how long it is, but here, see? And it's one of those ones, so your arm is over it and it's protected, but it slides. Fun. They make fun noise. <laughs> and it's, yes, walk and knit at the same time. The black one has a silver, and you can see this one has the little loopy guys inside too, and with the outside pocket. So it's for smaller projects. You could do maybe a pair of socks or something like that. Or just carry it so that is the moon belt purse e thing <laughs> put those aside and then we have we had these before and now we're getting them back in this is from twig and horn and it is an origami yarn basket and here is the illustration. This is made of 50% wool and 50% recycled synthetic fibers. It's made in the United States and it comes like this. It's flat and then you fold it up into a bag. It's like felted. It's got a wonderful cool texture and so this is what it looks like flat and this it's a bucket for you to set and have your knitting in and then you can pick it up and carry it around isn't that and you can see the way the little tabbies are and that's how it gets put together so you fold it up it's just really cool and hi Laura and we love these for knitting but also what is really great ooh, <laughs> that kind of turned me into a zombie there didn't it ah exposure <laughs> Um, these are really great because they're made out of this felty fabric to put enamel pins on. Enamel pins are all the rage and you could cover this in enamel pins. And so this is the Twig and Horn Origami Yarn Basket if you're looking for it. And this is what it looks like flat. So it'd be a great gift, easy to ship. But I went and I grabbed, this is one of our cool clear bags, all of the enamel pins, examples. They're not all of them, there's a whole wall of them. The en enamel pins that we have that are so fun. So first one out is the Rainbow Pride yarn hang. Isn't that super cool? And then I love this one. This is the fried egg, but it's a yarn ball. And we've got some critters. We got a bee and a fox. And I know there's more of the Danica ones in here. Um, ooh, a kitty. A cool eyeball. And we have a matching bag for that eyeball. Here's a sheep head. Bah. We've got our craftivist pin. This one I love. This is the fearless knitter pin. And really, you gotta be fearless to put something on your knitting bag that's a moth, okay? It's just like, I'm not scared of nothing. <laughs> and then we fun, I feel like craft today. Yes. And then, okay, there's one more in here. Look, either a llama or an alpaca. I'm not 100% sure which one, but it's cute and fluffy. And then we have our A Good Yarn ones. So we've got a good yarn. So you can put it on your bags to show people that you support a good yarn. Here is a spinning wheel. And we've got a loom for our weavers. We've got a pearl diver pin for our pearl diver club. I love, this is hashtag frog my life. <laughs> this is for your frog pond. And then are a good yarn on knitting needles. So if you like these enamel pins, if you want to send gifts to the fiber enthusiast on your list, these are great. And I put them in the bag. And this bag is so great because it stands up all by itself. So, you know, as I said, I love bags. Gonna put that to the side. Okay more yarn so we wanted to show off one of our favorite yarns 
that we have here. This is Woolfolk Luft, okay? Luft is, let me find where on the label does it say what it is. Hmm. Where did, oh, there it is. So it is 55% Ovis 21 Ultimate Merino Circle R. So that has got to be some kind of fancy wool and 45% Pima cotton. 1% uh, of the profit on wool yarn goes back to Ovis 21. So I need to look that up and find out exactly what that is. You can really see it in this one. So what this type of yarn is, is you see the white? So the white is going to be the cotton and the cotton is like a little I cord. It's like a little tiny, tiny knitted tube. And then the wool is blown into that tube. Um, it is, Julie said, it's so light and soft, and that's what it is. It is so unbelievably light. Something of this weight that was in just a solid plied wool is going to be heavy. And because of this structure, it retains the um, insulative properties, but with substantially like less wool, and so it's warm and it traps a lot of air, but it's not physically heavy. It is a very thick yarn. I think it's in the air and the bulky weight, but is just gorgeous. This, and, and this is one of the ones like last week we had that their uh, colors are fabulous um, in that. The name of it is L6. <laughs> not very creative names. This is 109 yards in 100 meters and the skein weighs 50 grams, they recommend a nine to 11 needle. So it definitely falls into the Aaron to bulky weight. As I said, this is L6. This one I adore. This is L9. I don't know if you can tell, it has a purpley almost, yeah, I don't think you can tell through here. It has like a purpley, almost super dark eggplant color to it with the white cage. This is a black with the white cage. This one is gorgeous. This is L4 and it is like this mustardy gold with the white cage so it gives it that depth. And then this is L2. It is a very fine silver with the white cage and the gray silver color is so light the white really stands out on this one. And then this is L7. So this is another gray one but it has a slight, it's sort of like they took this and mixed it with this. It has a slight brownie look to it. It's a darker gray but it's still pretty. And then we have ones where the cages are not as visible. Actually, no, this one still has the cage as visible. This is L11. And again, it's kind of a creamy color. But then this one being L10 is definitely white on white. It's not a pure white, but like comparing it to the gray, you can see it is a, a, a cooler definitely towards the white direction. And then we have L12 and L13, which are gray and black respectively. And the black is very black. The cage is black, so there's nothing coming through. And in this gray one, it's gray on gray. So you don't have that cage detail. So you've got these colors. Now, as always, we like to suggest patterns to go with what we have, and we have this sample. This is called the Gaptastic Cowl. It is a free pattern that you can go online and find. It takes two skeins, and it's one of these ones, apparently the person who designed it, it's one of those ones that they saw it in the Gap and did a knockoff of it for the pattern so we could all have it. Um, if you've ever wondered how to put on a cowl like this, in the double wrap, instead of, what happens if you put it here and twist it, you end up with the twist in the front. So what you wanna do is pull it towards the back like this and twist it when it's behind your head 
and then flip it over the top like that. And then it's air and weight, there you go. And then you've got the twist in the back and you've got all the fluffiness and everything in the front. And you can see in this picture, it's shown really, really, really wrapped around. You can get multiple wraps out of it. And it's just one of those big, and it's so soft and it's light. So it works beautifully in this. It's a very simple piece. And then the other sample of this we have to show you is Hohi Locatelli's Dark Cloud. Okay, yes, it's an Aran weight yarn. So this is Dark Cloud. Oh, so the pattern was altered, 10 and a half needle cast on. Okay, so the sample, there was a little bit of a change to make it work. I'm sure we can get you that information. Here is Dark Cloud. Um, Susan, is that yarn online yet? I'm sure she'll answer. And here is, okay, my face, Okay, the cow is <laughs> the cow is the gap tastic cow. Here we go. They saw it in the gap and they made it. This is dark cloud, <laughs> and it is an open sided. See, it's nice and open sided, and it's just an oversized. Um, sweatery thing to throw on. It has a, the open on the side, so this would be definitely an over piece that you would throw on over something else, but it's so soft and it's light. It's so much lighter than you would think a piece of this size would be. And I can't keep my face and this on at the same time because it just cannot. So yes, that this yarn is online. I'm gonna stick it behind me. No, I'm gonna stick it over here. So, if you love that luff like we do and again it's knit on bigger needles so it's going to knit up faster and you'll get a little more instant gratification like on a knitting timeline and the the patterns are linked on our project the the product page so if you go to a good yarn sarasota and look at this yarn we have the suggested patterns there so you can find them um and the dark cloud comes in sizes from extra small to five extra large so anybody can knit this one and it is designed for luft like the pattern specifically calls for luft so it is a great great pattern now we have we are so lucky we have a trunk show right now um, if you do have the opportunity to come in, I really encourage you because this is one of those where I'm excited to show it to you and it's beautiful, but this is something that really needs to be touched because it is that time of year. You know, for some people it's pumpkin spice latte time, some people it's sweater weather. I think that as knitters we should call it cashmere weather. <laughs> because cashmere is fabulous. And let me get this rolled in. We have, <laughs> I have a thing, I, well, you know what, I'm not gonna be able to get it all in. We have the trunk show and it has beautiful pieces on it. We have, let's start here. We have one skein you can make this super simple hat. This is the North Oxford hat. And then we also have this super cute little cashmere beret you can make. And this also comes in a child size. So you could do like a matchy matchy kind of situation, parent and child. It's got this beautiful shaping that makes it poof out and just be a great little beret it would be so cute and the patterns are included with the yarn purchase that we're going to be showing you so and you just it's this it's you have to come and touch it it's so soft it's cashmere okay so what we have here so this is a gorgeous just top down little triangular shawl a little kerchief um, so, top down triangle. The way you're gonna put this on is you hold it centered, right? 
I'm gonna do it with my chin. And then you take your hands and position it on either side of the center, about shoulder width apart, and bunch it up, and then just stick it on like that. So it's up. Then you're gonna bring one end around, and then you're gonna bring the other end around. And then this is, I call this wearing it bandito style. It's a band, banded style, it's that thing on, you can have them out like this, or you can tuck them up under for extra warmth. And you've got, it's like a cowl style. But you can also wear it more loosely, pull it out. You can always wear it asymmetrically. If you have a shawl pin, you could pull it around. See, my problem is my hair gets in the way. So you pull the point around and you could have it up like this. Let's tuck it through like this and see what happens. Little scarves like this, because they're little, they usually work best if they have a shawl pin or a shawl cuff or something that will help them stay on. But it's just a little something to throw around your neck and keep you warm, especially with the point in the front. It helps if it's tucked inside of a jacket to keep that wind from going in, but it's so, oh my gosh, so luxurious. And this is, it has a tag. This is the Putnam Triangle. It takes three balls. Let's see, this up here. Then we have this sweet little capelet that does not have a tag on it. So hopefully, uh, we can supply the information on that. I don't think this is my size. It's a little short, so I'm not gonna try it on, but these little capelets are super cute. Um, this would be really adorable for a little girl or someone with shoulders not as wide as mine, but it also, you know what? I bet I can put it on because it's just gonna work as a cowl. There we go. So there. So it's a really sweet little cowl. If you have narrower shoulders, it can pull over the shoulders or it would be great for a little girl. So, or anybody, this would be great. I love this color. Um, this is gonna sound slightly crazy, but cowls like this, you know what they're really great for? Riding motorcycles. <laughs> and I've had motorcyclists tell me because you need to stay warm, but if you have a scarf that has the ends, you know, you're moving fast and it might come off or you might get tangled in it. But these cowls are really great options for the cyclists in your life because they stay on. So, and it is so, 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 so soft. Okay, and she linked, there's a link in the um, comments below to the pattern sources. And then we have, Oops, I'm just gonna pick that up. I'm not gonna wrestle with it right now. Ridgeway Capelet, excellent. This is, oh, look at this. This is going to be comfort knitting. This is just a straight rectangular wrap and it starts with the one color and you have a little bit of striping at transition and then a little bit of striping at transition and it's just, this is, you could just knit this probably with your eyes closed. And it is so soft and so luxurious. And this is definitely one that what I would do is the whole fold it in half and then tritone wrap. You bring it around, reach through your loop and pull it through and you will be the snuggliest person like ever. It will keep you so warm of course, you could wear it, uh, how could you wear this? You could definitely wear this. <laughs> Again, start with where you want it centered in the front. Pull one leg around and you could just wear it like this with one leg hanging down your back or you could bring the other leg around. And this is really fun because then you get those three colors and you see all three colors at the same time and it could be done with any of the three colors i think it would be beautiful oh my gosh this is so warm <laughs> and so very very soft so that's the tritone wrap and we have another this one this is so classic look at this this is just a simple ribbed 
long, long scarf. It is so gorgeous. Oh, this is this one definitely so classic and it, it's very long. It goes way down. We can definitely throw it over the back, wear it any number of ways. Oh, just again, these are really soothing knitting and having this cashmere on your needles is it's just delicious. And it's beautiful and if you can come in and feel this the ribbing gives it more depth and allows the cashmere to really bloom and it's just so very very soft i can imagine this uh wearing this everywhere and anywhere it's and it's really wide it's it's a very either a very wide scarf or a narrow stole i'm gonna put that one and then we have one more stole and again, we like these rectangles. Look at this one, it's got the lace. Just, and this isn't even lace. This is what we would consider an eyelet pattern. So it's just gonna be a knit two together yarn over situation. Very easy to knit, very comforting to knit, and very, very beautiful. This one, ugh, so pretty. This one is long enough and would be super fun to wear. You know what I would do? You could do this and tie it behind you and it's kind of a shouldery thing situation. It's gonna wrap you up. Oh, these are so snugly. Man, I could put all these on. They're so gorgeous. So what did you do today, Barbara? I went and I played with cashmere. <laughs> I am the luckiest person in the world. So these are, this is, this, well, this one has a tag. This is the Gotham shawl. This takes six balls to make it this long, but obviously this is definitely one that if you wanted to do it smaller, what I would do is do a smaller number until it was the length you wanted, and then you could just graft it together and make it into a big loopy cow like the Gaptastic cow. Now I need to show you the colors that this cashmere comes in. You've seen a lot of them. It comes in a true, true black because there's nothing. I must say that Pete, last year people came in and I had to have had at least four or five people who just wanted to knit a black cashmere scarf for someone living in some big city someplace. It is a classic accessory that goes with absolutely everything. So we've got the black. Now, this is dark navy. I know it's not going to look any different, but you can barely see. This one is a beautiful, super, super dark, dark navy blue. You can only tell it's blue when you stick it next to the black. We have this stunning, dark, almost army green. I think this, I really think the colors here were selected to be classic pieces that are going to last forever and go with timeless kind of situation. So, so, so soft. And then we have the winter white. And then there is light sand and you can see they're very lightly different. In case I didn't mention it, this is DK weight. I'm pretty sure I didn't. <laughs> So this is DK, 50 grams, 125 yards per ball, and it is just beautiful 50 gram balls. We've got a French gray, and then this is camel, you know, goes with anything. And then, so those are sort of the neutrals. Then there are the fun colors you can bring in as a pop. I adore this one. It's called Pale Blush. Beautiful, beautiful pink. I think this would go with just about anything. I think it'd look amazing with the black. I'd love it with this green. How gorgeous is that? Just a little bit of color to bring into things little bit more color you saw this this was in the triangle shawl this is scarlet and it is a beautiful bright 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 red and then this is the purple i mean the purple would go with the pink oh so pretty and then this one 
This is called YOLO, Y-O-L-O, which you only live once. Look at that. It is neon yellow. And this, I think, with the gray, just a little bit of pop of this, it just is gonna make a huge, huge statement. I like it with, I like it with all the colors. It looks amazing. So, I have, <laughs> oh, it's so, so soft. So, so soft. So, that is the cashmere. So, as I said, I had a lot of yarn to show you. The beautiful new Wilson Ruana from Miss Catherine and the bags. Oh, there's a whole other bag I forgot. Oh my goodness, it got squished aside. I thought I was done, but there's one more. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. I'll be right back. We got in new yarn from Farmer's Daughter Fibers. And this is one of Susan's favorite yarns. It is a sparkle yarn. I know I said in the little thing where it said that there were gonna be sparkles. I almost forgot the sparkles. This is called Moon Sisters, is this base. And it is 75% Superwash Marina, 20% Nylon, and 5% Stellina. Stellina is the sparkle. And so since it's a 7520, it is going to make socks. You can make sparkly socks, but it could also make beautiful sweaters. We already, I, I am one color short in my basket here because someone already came in and bought pretty much all of one color and they're going to make a weekend or light sweater out of it. The nylon is gonna help it hold its shape. This color is elk antler. And let me see if I can shift it so you can see the sparkles. There's one right there. You can see it, it's a very subtle. Oh, no, you don't have to be on camera. I'm the only one that has to be on camera. <laughs> so there we go. And let me tell you, Sue, half the time this time of day, I'm still in my pajamas. And every once in a while, I'll be making a video and I'll be business up top, pajama on the bottom you can't see but luckily I come into work here so I have to have on pants so <laughs> there we go this it's got a very subtle but slight sparkle just love it then this color is eagle eye so farmer's daughter is really they're from the the southwest west area and they're really well known for the colors of that region so you've got this gorgeous kind of ruddy brown and then this is pump porch pumpkin. Oh, so pretty. And because it's hand dyed, you can see it's got the variation in the color. So it's going to knit up beautifully. This one, this, the color. So in this one, the sparkle is the same color. It's got the same gold color. So that is really, it's really subtle. This color, oh. This color is kinnick, kinnick, kinnick. K-I-N-N-I-K-I-N-N-I-C-K. -N -N -I -I -K. So, connect, connect, connect. I don't know how many connects there are in that. Beautiful, beautiful green. A little bit of schwatz on there. Beautiful green. And I love this with the pumpkin. Look at that. That is absolutely beautiful. We've got Mr. Pocket. It's a gorgeous dark green, but with more variation than some of the others. So, it's got a light greenness to it absolutely stunning this blue oh my goodness this is called kwa no idea what that stands for but it's a great blue and you can see the sparkle in there maybe kwa is knitter with attitude <laughs> this is a light this is called horse belly and it is a light camely color i'm going to compare it to the darker brown so you can see and this this color would go, literally go with absolutely any color I just pulled out. Look at that. And then we have S-I-N-O-P-A-H, Sinopoff. This is like a beautiful purpley, I'm gonna go with purple. I was gonna say it might go burgundy, but no, it's definitely a purple, I would say in like a, a dusty grape situation. And then this is Juniper. This is gorgeous. I don't know if you can see it. It's got a faint gray ink going on in here with the pretty almost sea foam and the sparkles. It's just 
a beautiful, beautiful yarn. How many yards in a skein? Thank you for asking. This is 438 yards in 100 grams. That's pretty standard for a fingering weight yarn. So look at that. So those are all the new Farmer's Daughter and I'm so glad I caught them out of the corner of my eye because I picked these up. This was the first thing I picked up this morning when I was prepping. So we are opening up. <laughs> Did you hear the ding? We have a new ding. We are opening up, which means it is time for me to wrap things up. Thank you all so much once again for joining us on Wednesday. Remember that we're going, we are closed on Tuesday, but then we are going to have a special guest on this, this next Wednesday and we're going to meet and have some more fun. And again, thank you so much and uh, let me know what you thought and if there's anything new that you want to hear about or anything you would like to see more of. So thank you so much and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.